Spanish tourism. No, it didn't start in 1964, but way back in the early part of the 1800s. But what on earth brought travellers to the dusty heights of this country? Was it the chance of a quick tan? Was it the price of alcohol in a beach bar on the costas? Or were they in search of a bargain country ruin to reform and let out as holiday lets? To find out, join me, the Gaspacho Monk, on this episode of Romantic Spain. <laughs> The journey to Spain was for many a romantic traveller of the 19th century, not just an exotic trip, but an opportunity to step out of modern Europe. To traverse the Pyrenees was as good as stepping into Africa. Ford, Borrow, Washington Irving, they would all take the same routes through to the south to reach the prized treasure, the Alhambra. A journey that was fraught with danger, as armed guards would have to be employed to accompany each coach and protect it from bandits en route. Coming from Seville or Malaga was a three-day ride with an obligatory stop at Loja. Washington Irving, diplomat and author of Tales of the Alhambra, described Loja as such a wild, mountainous place, with caves and underground caverns, full of outlaws, smugglers and sorcerers, a hellish place. It was these writers that would pen a new Spain, a romantic one that would entice more and more people to peak beyond the Pyrenees, and the further they travelled south, the more they left behind what they recognised as Europe. In the crevices, obscured by shadows, they discovered the intoxicating smell of orange blossom. And when they reached the Alhambra at dusk, they were enchanted by the deep reds and blues against the white backdrop of the Sierra Nevada. Tourism crept forward, taking cautious and tentative steps. But by the 1930s, Spain was still desperate to be rediscovered. So it went in search for help, and it turned to Hollywood. Yo, say cheese. Mr. Cheese Man, 